Hello, this is Bern, and if you often find yourself unable to express what you want deep in your heart to a man, and often feel disrespected or misunderstood, I'm going to share with you today how to change that once and for all. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com, a space where I share with ambitious and conscious women how you can attract the man and the relationship you want. Listen. If you find yourself often misunderstood or unable to share what you want, not just with one guy, but multiple guys, and you get anxious, you get maybe introspective, you feel ashamed in some way, and guys act in ways that are not necessarily fun for you, but you catch yourself pushing your emotions down and not expressing what you want or need, maybe out of fear that they'll go away, here's how you can change that. Step number one is to recognize that you need to be compassionate with yourself. Why compassionate? Because it takes so much courage and so much vulnerability to express what you want and what you need to someone. Why does it take courage and vulnerability? Well, because it's simple. They can judge you, they could ridicule you, they could think you're weird, they could walk away. And typically, those fears, not necessarily the lack of wanting to express what you want, but the fear of what would happen if you did, is what keeps you from expressing what you want. So the first step is have compassion with yourself. Understand it's gonna take a little bit of time before you become a pro at this, but there's no need to continue feeling like you can't get what you want or you can't express the music that's inside of you to sing to the world. So take a deep breath. Step number one, be compassionate. Step number two is identify your feelings clearly. Here's why it's difficult sometimes to share something that you need to someone. Because if you yourself are not clear on what's going on inside your heart, if you can't pinpoint the emotion or emotions you're feeling, communicate what you want is much harder. I was listening to a podcast recently that was talking about most human beings have access to, in word, two or three emotions. And the challenge when you only have access to happiness or sadness, for example, as emotions or anger, is that there's so many more emotions in between. Uh, joy, shame, on a positive and negative part, right? Uh, gratitude, fulfillment, uh, introspection. Maybe you feel alive. Maybe you feel uh, withdrawn. Maybe you feel shy. There's so many different experiences that you could express. And if you're not clear about what's going on, maybe you feel uncomfortable. Maybe you feel something's off and you're not sure why, but it's discomfort in your system that's allowing you to experience that. When you can pinpoint more specifically what emotions you're experiencing, then you can go to step number three, which is identify the gap. So let's say, let's give you an example. So you're sitting down in front of a man, you go on a date, and you're feeling off. You're not excited about what's going on. The situation is not one that makes you feel good. You don't feel a connection with him. You feel maybe he's rude or he's not connecting to your heart or maybe he's too pushy in some way and you're feeling uncomfortable. Now there's two levels of discomfort you could experience. One is the discomfort of this is this sucks and I don't want to be here but there's an hour left in this conversation unless I change something, right? So you have two options. One is to express something that has the potential to change the dynamic or two, you can push it down and experience an hour of more pain. The challenge if you do that is that the dating principle, next time somebody asks you on a date, you're gonna be a little less likely to go on a date because you're gonna feel, well, what if it's like that time? What if I have to sit through an hour or two hours of something that's not fun? I'd rather stay inside. And when you start doing that, you get the result that you don't want, which is staying single. So what happens when you identify what you want? Maybe you connect with someone, you feel like the guy is not curious or interested in you. You feel like it's one-sided. When you identify the gap, I mean, first, what am I feeling? I'm feeling unseen, I'm feeling unheard, I'm feeling slightly disrespected. The gap, the gap is what do you want? Well, I want to experience feeling seen. I want to experience a sense of connection. I want to experience maybe a sense of curiosity from him. I want to be able to express myself and ask questions, right? So what's step number four? Once you identify that, step number four is simple, but very, very important, which is stop waiting for comfort. Typically at that moment, you're waiting for an opening, you're waiting for something that makes it feel easier to express. The challenge with that is that it may not come. By definition, being vulnerable and expressing your heart is uncomfortable. So if you understand that you can't wait for comfort, 
you need to take a deep breath and do the next step, which is five seconds of courage eliminate hours of pain. Sometimes five seconds of courage can eliminate years of pain. What does that mean? You're going to count to five and then you're going to share anything imperfectly without uh, being able to say it super comfortably uh, with your voice shaking, your hands trembling, you're going to say something. So let's review the example from before. Let's say you're connecting with a guy, you don't feel like he's hearing you, you don't feel like you have a chance to chime in and express yourself to him. You could say something like, hey, uh, can we take a second? Thanks for asking these questions. I feel like I'd love to ask you some questions, but I feel a little bit shy right now. It seems like, like the dialogue is going one-sided and I really want to get a chance to know you. Is it okay if we switch roles a little bit and I ask you some questions, that's uncomfortable. Why? Because the guy could say, you know what? No, you're wrong and you're weird and you're uh, closed off to me. He could say that. Now, if he says that, guess what happens? You can say, well, this is not working for me. So you can end it, right? Now, if he says, I love to, I'm sorry, I was absorbed, let's switch roles. Then you have a chance of getting more of what you want. But it took those five seconds of you being willing to risk more in order to get everything you're looking for. Otherwise, what's going to happen? You're going to end that thing and you're never going to want to see him again. Why? Because you felt misunderstood, misheard. Now, am I saying that by you expressing what you want, that this guy is going to now flip on the switch and become amazing for you? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that he now has a chance to understand what's missing and can change it. Okay? Step number five is, I'd love for you to understand if this is a recurring theme in your life, if this is something that you've experienced more than once and you can't find necessarily the stride of changing it, there might be something that you feel is missing inside of you that's preventing you from setting that boundary with kindness and love. There might be something that deep down inside of you you feel is something that if the guy were to discover, uh, he'd find the fraud that you are. Not necessarily this is logical, but that's what we do as <laughs> emotional human beings. Maybe you feel like um, the, there's something that you are not bringing to the table. And when you feel like there's something missing, then you have to compensate that by allowing people in some small way to step all over you. So what if, what if there's nothing missing in you? What if those flaws that you feel are so big are part of the totality that make you an extraordinary human being and that give you a sense of purpose and that give you a deeper sense of understanding and a greater sense of empathy? What if your greatest flaws or the things you feel afraid to shine out into the world are the things that have made you who you are and make you more valuable? What if the guy that you're connecting with has flaws of his own that you haven't discovered and as long as you put him on a pedestal, you'll never be able to see eye to eye, but the moment you, you know that just like you have baggage, he has baggage. Just like you're scared of things, he's scared of things. Just like you're th there's things that if people were to find out, you'd feel ashamed. Maybe there's many things that he'd feel ashamed for. Then the situation equalizes and you recognize once and for all that even though it's uncomfortable to share, here's what I'm feeling right now and here's what I'd like to change. And that's challenging. It's more challenging to keep that inside and to push it down. So I'm not asking you to do this because it's fun. I'm not asking you to do this because it's easy. I'm not asking you to do this because it's comfortable. I'm asking you to do it because the alternative is an unlived life where you get to keep the things that are precious to you deep down and people don't get to meet your needs. Not necessarily because they don't want to, but because you're not expressing them. Expression and courage are muscles that you develop. You develop them every time you imperfectly, with trembling hands and shaking voices, express something that you want to say. Even if you don't say it perfectly, even if you say it and you say, well, that sucked the way I expressed it, that is far more courageous than keeping within. So my advice to you is express what you want to say imperfectly and often until it becomes the second part of your nature. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful if it is, and you want to learn how to take this deeper and enter the relationship you want. I created a class for you that all you have to do is go to the first link under the description of this video, enter your name and email, and you'll be redirected to take that class right away. If you like this video, click like or thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified of new episodes. And last but not least, if you have been struggling with finding your soulmate, if you're not exactly sure how to go about this and you want to eliminate hours of trial and error and cut down years of your learning curve, we might be able to work together. Second link will allow you to apply to work with me. All you have to do is fill out a short form and if we're fit to work together, we'll connect, we'll speak and I might be able to hold you by the hand 
as you go to these treacherous waters and make it easier, more fun, and definitely cut down a lot of time in your process. Thank you so much, and as always, challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.